Good evening and welcome to the Pen Habit. My name is Matt, and now is the time on the Pen Habit when we dance. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pen Habit. And、uh, if you can't tell from my horribly stilted accent, we're heading back to Germany for a pen today. Now,、uh, this is another pen. I would like to stay up front. Thank you to Caveco、uh, for sending this for, pen for review. They've sent several pens for season two for the review. This pen will be returned at the end of the review, so it's it's on loan. It is not a keeper, and all opinions are mine. I was not otherwise compensated for reviewing this pen. So disclaimers out of the way. Now onto the pen. Clearly, if it came from Caveco, it's a Caveco pen. Comes in a little pen sleeve, and normally Caveco's pens come in this these、uh, little tins like this, but、uh, this pen comes in a slightly more. Refined coffin, I think. I like the tins a lot, but this feels just a little bit more professional.、Uh, this is the Caveco Dia Two, and it's got a nice little little button latch here. You can see a little button latch. Press it down, open it up, and inside is the Dia Two. So this is a slightly more classic feeling pen than a lot of other, Caveco's other offerings. Uh, it's it's one of the it's only the second full length pen of theirs that I've ever used, and I use the full length in、uh, in air quotes. Very nice pen.、Um, where where all the other well most of the other pens were made out of metal. This pen is made out of acrylic, but it does have a metal lining, so it gives it some heft.、Uh, very classic feel. The design is kind of 30s 40s inspired. Uh, very feels very classic and、uh, and understated, but still. Very clean and efficient.、Um, so I, I like the design on this a lot. It feels nice in the hand, whole nine yards. So let's let me talk through the design. So on the top, you've got the Caveco logo here, a、uh, little medallion in the top in gold plated metal. Then you've got knurling、uh, around the barrel here. I don't know if you can see that with the light or around the top of the cap, which gives it a nice feel. The clip is very solid, very stiff.、Um, so really solid clip there. Says Caveco, and comes down to this little,、uh, almost Art Deco-y style design down there. Double bands at the base of the cap. Slight taper down toward the bottom of the barrel. Another ring. A little more knurling on the barrel, and then、uh, one more gold medallion at the bottom of the pen with the Caveco logo. So、uh, the threads here are acrylic, very smoothly cut. Not a lot of give in the, the threads there. And then we come to the pen itself.、Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen, uses standard international. The one thing to note is、uh, there is brass lining the inside of this, and the the collar here is brass, so you can't use、uh, you can't use this as an eyedropper.、Um, just FYI, but it does use standard international converters and cartridges,、uh, and it will use the long cartridges as well as the short ones. Just so you are aware of that,、uh, and then、uh, nice, slightly concave section here, and then we come to the nib. Now, this nib is a special case.、Um, all of Caveco's pens that I've reviewed so far come with a steel nib, and this is the original nib that comes with the Caveco Dia Two. It's a steel nib. It is gold plated,、um, and they sent a double broad nib. With me,、uh, and and I've used this nib, the the steel nib that it comes with. It's a beautiful nib,、uh, very smooth, and I'll I'll show when we get to writing. I'll show you how that writes in comparison to what's actually on the pen now.、Uh, in addition to the dr- double broad steel nib that came with the pen, and which is what comes with the pen if you buy it brand new,、uh, I also wanted to take an opportunity to use this review to review Caveco's new offering of. Gold nibs, fourteen karat gold nibs. Now I love myself a gold nib,、uh, mainly because you don't need a gold nib. Let me just go on record as saying that you know most pens will write wonderfully without gold nibs. I like gold because I like the idea of gold. I like that most gold nibs are a little bit springier, have a little bit more give to them. This one is no exception, and、uh, and usually because gold is such an expensive material. I find that the workmanship that goes into making gold nibs is quite a bit higher than the workmanship that goes into making most steel nibs. So I generally find there is less work that needs to be done on my gold nibs than there is on my steel nibs. Now that's not an across-the-board thing; that is just something I have noticed. So 
The nib unit, uh, you can see here, this is the, the steel nib unit. Caveco's pens, most of them, you can just screw the nib unit out and put a new one in. And uh, so you can buy the gold nib separately uh, if you wanted to. Caveco sent along an extra gold nib for me to try in broad, so I put it in the pen and I'll be using that for the review. But I also want to show you how it writes with the, uh, with the double broad steel nib. So let's go over the stats of the pen. So we are looking at a pen that is 18 grams without the cap and 28 grams with the cap. So it's a middle tier weight. It's not too heavy, not too light. That brass liner will help give it a little bit of extra heft if you like that in your pens. Uh, you're looking at an uncapped length of 125 millimeters. So quite comfortable to hold in the hand. I, I like the way this feels in my hand without capping or, or without posting rather. Capped, you are looking at a length of 133 millimeters. So it's not the biggest pen in the world, but it's a decent size. And then posted, you're looking at 157. Now this cap posts very securely. You don't have to worry about it going anywhere. I think that knurling on the back of the barrel helps a little bit. I do find it to be a little unwieldy at 157 millimeters, particularly if I, you know, if it's, you know, if I hold it down here, it's not too bad. But if you're, if you hold your pen close to the paper, it can get a little back heavy feeling. It's still kind of balanced, but I would not post this pen myself personally. In terms of the diameters, you're looking about nine and a half millimeters here. So a little narrower than I generally like, but not unusable by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you're looking at 11.8 or almost 12 millimeters at the widest point of the barrel. And in the cap, you're looking at just over 14 millimeters. Now, one thing I will mention about the grip on this pen is uh, I mentioned the threads. If you are a person who holds your pen a little further back, as I sometimes am, the threads don't bother me at all. They're very smoothly cut and not sharp. Um, so I, but I find myself holding the pen in the middle of the section where one ought to hold this particular pen. And it, that works well for me. All right. So, this pen retails in the U.S. for about $125 uh, with the steel nib. I don't know off the top of my head what the gold nib cost is on top of that. I don't know if those are, are publicly available yet or if they will be soon, but um, I hope they will be soon. Uh, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So uh, let's go ahead and do a writing sample and let me show you how this writes. Okay, so now we have the Caveco. Dia 2. And this is with a 14 karat gold broad nib. And the ink is also Caveco Summer Purple. All right. And let's do the quote. All right, so this nib is very, very stubby for a round nib. This is supposed to be a round nib, but this has very stub-like qualities. And you can see what I mean by that. On the downstrokes, I get much wider than I do on the, the um, cross strokes. And that's, uh, that's actually nice. If I were to guess, if this were a stub, I'd say this is probably around a 0.8 or a 0.9 millimeter stub. Now, this is supposed to be a round nib, so it's not going to be quite as stubular as you might expect. But just know that this nib has some stub-like qualities. Um, in terms of wetness, and you, you've noticed a couple times here that I've, it's, it started slow on me, um, or not at all. Um, it's moderately wet. It's not super wet, but it's wet enough to be really smooth. Um, 
and uh, and it it floats nicely. It doesn't feel dry at all to me or or overly feedbacky. You get a little tiny bit of feedback, but um, n- not enough to be unpleasant in any way. Uh, in terms of line variation, uh, being a 14 karat nib, you can press it a little bit. It's not really a, even a semi flex, but you can get a little bit of line variation out of it, which is nice if you need to. Um, all in all, I like this nib quite a bit. It's very smooth. Um, you know, there's now you've noticed probably if you've been paying close attention, every now and again I'll bit I'll get a bit of a hard start. And I haven't really been able to tie li, excuse me, tie down why that is. But a lot of that I is I think that the ink flow can sometimes dry up. If I stop writing for too long in between. Uh, writing segments, sometimes the ink dries up. And if I just do a light tap like this, or just put a tiny little bit of pressure down, it will it will start writing right away. Um, I also find that the nib has a bit of a, a sweet, a, a fairly narrow sweet spot. If you're not right on, um, you'll lose it pretty quickly. And I tend to roll my pen just a little bit. So a lot of times that may be why, you know, you can see here, I'm just going to very slowly rotate my pen and it it's it's almost immediate it's like right 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 and nothing. So uh, and it all I did was rotate it from here to here. Uh so just just be aware of that. Once you get the ink going, it's fairly if the flow is actually quite nice. So uh yeah, now this is I have to say I like this nib a lot. If I were, if this were my nib to keep, what I would probably do, uh, it doesn't need to be smooth, but I would probably knock just a little bit of material off the nib to uh, to kind of knock down. It's not a, a full baby's bottom, but I, I would want to just flatten the nib surface just a little tiny bit and um, hopefully take away just a, a bit of that sweet spot problem. But that's, you know, it's certainly not necessary. Uh, let me do the upside down writing. It will write. It actually feels even more stubbish upside down than it does right side up, but it's pretty scratchy on this side. So there we go. Now I'm going to move this over here quickly because I recorded this view, uh, this review yesterday, but I had the steel nib in instead of the the uh, nib that came, or instead of the uh, the gold nib, and I want to put them side by side. So on your left is the steel or is the gold nib, and on your right is the steel nib. Now you'll notice this is a broad. This is a double broad. Um, so it appears that they are making their gold nibs run wider and slightly wetter than they do their steel nibs. Uh, to me, that's that's a great thing because I found their steel nibs to be a little on the dry side and a little too narrow for the designation that they were given. It's a personal preference thing, totally, but but just be aware if you're going with the broad or if you're going with the gold nib rather, that you may find a, a broader experience on the gold nibs than you would on the steel nibs. Because, you know, with this being a double broad and this being a broad, that doesn't look like a double broad to me. And you can see, I don't know if you can see here on this, but yeah, this is the this is the steel nib that came with it. And there's the the double B right there. So um, I like the pen. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's got a nice classic look. Um, it's it does come in both a silver metal and a gold metal finish. So if you prefer the silver metal finish, that is available. Um, on this pen, I actually find that I like the gold better, which is unusual because I generally like the silver better. But the the design of it and the shape of the clip and everything, this just it screams to me of black and gold. And I, I above and beyond that, I can't really say why. The gold nib is wonderful. Um, I like it a lot. And it writes a nice, moderately wet line, nice and thick, a little bit stubbish without being a full-blown stub. And uh, and the steel nib runs a little on the dry side, not quite as wide as you would expect for a double broad, a little bit of line variation. But uh, And then you can see I, I, I wrote down here with the 14 karat gold broad just to do a comparison on the same page. So 
That has been my review of the Caveco Dia 2. Again, thank you to Caveco for sending this to me for review purposes. I like the pen a lot. This is one I don't see in a lot of US retailers. Hopefully we will start to see this more because I think especially with the 14 karat gold nib, if that starts becoming an option, I feel like this is going to be a, a nice pen to compete in the same range as, as the Edisons and the Franklin Christophs and things like this because it's, it's very well made, very solidly made, feels great in the hand, writes wonderfully, and, and it's good entry into that that market. So thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to head over to penhabit.com to join the conversation. Find me on the social media networks. If you're if you're like Penhabit and you want to help support these videos, uh, I'd love for you to head over to, to my Patreon page or uh, donate via PayPal. You can find information about that over at penhabit.com. And we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I saw nothing.